Hey guys, welcome back to Donny Boy 73, the Small Engine Doctor, and today is another episode of Small Engine's Questions and Answers for Friday, December 16th, 2011. So welcome back everybody. Before I start off today, I want to thank all the viewers who sent me some monetary gifts. I really appreciate that. Any amount is very well received and appreciated. Another thing I want to mention also today is if you send me some questions, the more information you send me, the easier it's going to be for me to answer your question. Now the absolute best way to send me a question is if you attach a video of the equipment you're working on. A lot of people have started doing that. It really saves me a lot of time and then I know exactly what you're talking about. And sometimes when you see the equipment, you can notice things that you wouldn't have if you just received an email. So if you can, send me pictures or a video, post it on YouTube, then send me the link and I'll go take a look at it. Now there will be times where I do physically have to see something I cannot always answer all the questions via email and by looking at videos. But most of the time I can do pretty good, but there'll be a small percentage of the time where I cannot answer your question. And for those of my viewers who like to look at older snowblowers, here's an older Craftsman 7 horsepower snowblower. I'm not sure of the year on this one, but it must be the late 70s or something like that. And I think that these snowblower bodies were made by Noma at the time, which is now owned by Briggs & Stratton, I believe. And it's got an older Tecumseh 7 horsepower engine. The cover's off right now. Apparently it's just running with the choke on. And it's got the throttle speed right here on the lever. And this one here actually has the safety levers. One's for the drive and one's for the auger. It's in pretty good shape though this one. If you gave it a coat of paint it would look really nice. Now to start off today I've had a question from a YouTuber asking me if you can use a snowblower motor on a go-kart. Well the answer to that is yes you can. Here's a Tecumseh engine from a snowblower, it's a 10 horsepower. Now this engine here has the second pulley over here, and this pulley here drove the transmission on the snowblower, so it will turn in the reverse of this shaft over here. If you want to get creative with your go-kart, you could keep this pulley here to make your go-kart reverse. So all you'd have to do is if you make a go-kart, take these pulleys off and put a clutch that fits on the shaft. Make sure you get the same size bore on your clutch as what your shaft is. Usually it's three quarters of an inch or one inch in diameter. And these little two-stroke engines from the Toro Snow Throwers, they work good as well. The only thing with these, if you have the carburetor with the float, you have to make sure that the engine is lined up so the carb is nice and straight like that. If you have the carburetor with the diaphragms, it doesn't matter if the carburetor is straight or not. It's just if you have the float here. And for mounting the engines, you have four holes at the base of the engine on this one. And on the two-stroke, you would just basically mount it on the sides over here. So you would have to make some kind of plate that would bolt onto here and then onto the body of your go-kart. And then from there, you just rig up your throttle cable to the carburetor butterfly here. And if you were using this engine here, you would just do the same. If you use a 10 horsepower engine like this one, you're going to have a lot of power. Now last week I showed two common Tecumseh carburetor bowls and some people might be wondering what the size of the holes are on these bowls. I'll start with the bowl with the smaller hole and if you take a 5 16 drill bit, you're going to see it fits nice and perfectly in there. So the inner hole on this one is 5 16 and the bowl with the bigger hole, it's a size 3 8. Just thought you guys might want to know that. Now my next question people often ask me, why is my blower blowing out rocks when I blow my driveway? Well that's usually because the skid plates on the front of your blower aren't adjusted high enough. Now when I'm talking about skid plates, I'm talking about these plates bolted down at the bottom of the front of your blower here. As you can see these are adjustable so what you would do is loosen them all up, then you would slide it down, hold it in position and then retighten the nuts. So the lower you push down the skid plates, the higher it's going to make the scraper bar inside the blower be. So the higher from the ground the scraper bar is, the less rocks it's going to grab. If it's too low to the ground, it's going to grab all the rocks on your driveway and blow them out the chute. But if you set the skid plates too high, what's going to happen is after you blow your driveway, you could end up with an inch or two of snow left on your driveway. So you may have to play with the adjustments of your skid plates for a while to get the proper setting. What I usually do is with the first snowfall, if there's not much snow, I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to blow it and then it gets hard packed down and then when you blow with the blower you're not catching all the debris and rocks that are on the ground. 
Now I do have an older video that shows how to adjust the skid plates on your snowblower and I'm going to put the link below this video here so you can go watch how it's done. Another question I often get, are you getting a lot of repairs of snowblowers with Chinese engines? Well the answer to that is no I don't get too many right now but that's because they've just started getting on the market and once they get used a few more years things are going to start to break but what I do see even though they are like brand new is the recoils often break on them. Another YouTuber was telling me that they've had problems with the carburetors. At this point in time I usually end up fixing only things on the snowblower body not the engine as of yet. They seem to be good engines, they seem to run good, they're nice and quiet, they start good, they're well covered to protect them from the snow. So I don't have anything bad to say about them at this point. As the years go by and they get used more, that's how we're going to know what the flaws are in them. But so far I don't really have anything bad to say, except for recoils. And when it comes to getting parts for these Chinese made engines, you pretty well have to go to the manufacturer of your snowblower. If you have an MTD, just go to your MTD dealer they can get all the parts for that engine. Another question I've been getting a lot lately is how good are the Chinese cylinder kits for chainsaws? Some of you guys have seen my videos on the Husky 55 with the rebuilt top hand with parts made in China so that's probably why I got that question a lot. Well my answer to that is they're pretty good. They're good for the homeowner but I would not recommend them for the professional unless that the parts are Nicosil coated the Nicosil coated top hand parts will have a shinier finish to them and when you buy them from the manufacturer or the seller they're going to tell you that they are Nicosil coated. If they're not Nicosil coated they're not going to last as long and usually that will be a selling feature that will be well marked in the description of the item you're buying. But like I said if you just use them as a homeowner they're usually pretty good. If you want the better top hand get them with the Nicosil coating. And if you're a professional landscaper and you use your saw a lot, I would recommend you get an OEM cylinder kit. If you have any experience with aftermarket cylinder kits, you can post your comments underneath this video. I'm sure all the other views would appreciate that as well. So that'll be it for this week's Q&A. Again, I want to welcome all my new subscribers. I want to thank those who regularly watch and comment. Thank you for all your support. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next Friday.